Hey guys, it is Tiffany Allen here. And if you're new here and this is the first time we're connecting, I am a clinical hypnotherapist and a mindset coach and a confidence coach. And I help women suffering and struggling after a toxic breakup really just get themselves comfortable loving themselves again so they can make clear choices so they can improve their confidence and so they can really just move on and be free basically free themselves rapidly like this process doesn't have to take months it doesn't have to take years and it doesn't have to it doesn't have to weigh you down anymore so if you guys are struggling let's connect reach out to me i'm always here um so i today want to share with you guys um some signs Basically, how to spot a narcissist. Some signs that you're dealing with a narcissist or have dealt with a narcissist. Because if you weren't aware and you guys broke up or you decided to leave, you may be left feeling like you are the problem. Like, oh, if you would have just tried harder. If you wouldn't have, like, nagged or whined or yelled so much. If you would have just calmed yourself and, and really just been better... You can be left feeling that way and then it makes it really lowers your self-esteem lowers your confidence and doesn't feel really good when really they were the toxic person they were the narcissistic person that really belittled you and made you feel low lower than you've ever felt so if you're jumping on live today let me know you're here and if you're watching if you're watching the replay just let me know you've been here i'll come back i'll say hey um so I just want to throw some signs out here so you can spot this and I'm kind of gonna and you can do this fast once you know the signs you can spot it out in less than a minute and then you can decide that person is not for me because they're toxic and I know they would hurt me or this seems like a healthy person so one they have an exaggerated sense of self-importance so they feel like you're lucky to be with me. You're lucky. Everyone loves me. I'm amazing. Like they have, they really flaunt it and exaggerate and brag about themselves to where it feels like really like they're only talking about their self. And when you come up and you want to start talking about stuff, you really, you really want to start connecting with them and share more about yourself. They don't really care. They, they interrupt you. They start talking about them they let you know how important they are to other people, how important they are at their job. They really exaggerate this and flaunt this. Another sign is that they have a sense of entitlement. Like they feel like they are entitled to so much from you. Like you're entitled to put things on the back burner for them. You're entitled to not speak your mind. Like they're entitled to have you walk on eggshells and not speak your mind because they deserve to be heard. They deserve to feel what they feel and you you don't. They they have this constant requirement of needing excessive admiration. They want you to tell them that, that they're they're doing good. They want you to really praise them for all the good things they're doing. They want you to be there whenever they're feeling sad. They want you to be there all the time when they aren't there for you. They're not there. They they don't care how you feel. They're not asking asking your opinion. They're not asking how you feel about a certain um thing or experience or maybe you got a new job. For example, maybe you got a new job and you're really excited about it. They don't really care. They don't ask you how you feel. They don't ask you how your day was. They don't care because they want you to do that for them. They want you to do everything for them. They don't really care about doing anything for you or how you feel. Um, so they need that and it's constant. It's excessive. They need it and need it and need it and they never give back. Another sign that you're dealing with a narcissist or a tox very toxic person is they have a lack of empathy for others. They don't care. They, they can't relate on a level to understand that someone else is hurting. They have never, maybe have never thought about your peel, your your feelings, your feelings. They maybe have never thought about your feelings. That may be why they don't ask about how your day is. That may be why they don't ask about how you're feeling or when you come to them wanting to talk about your relationship and wanting to put things out on the table so you can lay them out so you can overcome this struggle or this problem and, and really just get through it together. They want to shove it under the rug Forget that it even happened. Forget that you feel that way because they can't understand. They can't, they, they don't have any empathy. They can't ever get down on your level 
to understand how you're feeling. And that's why these relationships will never last. And if they do last, it's because you stayed, because they belittled you so much that you feel like this is all you deserve. That you that you could never do better. Or that you've been with them for so long. Why why leave and start all over? This is why. Because they they have they have no empathy. They don't care. And eventually they will if you stay long enough and you suffer with this long enough, they will get into your head to where you don't care about your feelings. Like your feelings don't matter. You don't need to talk about your feelings because they don't matter. And then it becomes subconscious. I talked about subconscious stuff earlier this morning. So another sign is that they have troubled relationships. So you may see the toxic person or narcissistic person go from relationship to relationship to relationship and they're all the same. They're all the same. Um, they may, and, it, and a lot of it I think feels like they, I don't, I don't know. They, it's, it's, I, I just talked to someone today where they were, and this is just an example. There was, they were with someone for a short time and it was really good. All the butterflies, all the positive high emotions, all the love, all the love bombing, all the good stuff. And then once it gets complicated, once things come up, you know, as relationships, any relationship has those moments where things come up, you want to address stuff. You don't want to shove it under the rug. You want to go get through this with each other. Once that comes up, they leave, they're done. They don't want to deal with it. That's too much for them or, and they leave or they, and they, then they go, this person went from a relationship to a relationship to a relationship, bombing the shit out of them, making them feel really, really good. And then leaving and making them feel shitty. So this could be, and this could be every relationship they've ever had is just pure toxic. And it's hard for you to know that's how it is because you've never really connected with the other people they've been in a relationship with. So you're just kind of blindsided to this. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah Cameron. Hey, Santana. Um, another sign, another sign you're dealing with a narcissist or toxic person is they're manipulative. Manipulative. If you don't do something they want, oh, well, maybe we should break up or mm, they'll, they'll really get into your head if they don't get their way. They'll really make you feel low about something or make you feel like you're obligated to do something if they don't get your way. And they do not care if this, if you just really, if you really came out and said, I don't really want to do that. It may be something against your morals. It may be something, it may be something that you just don't feel like doing and it's just not for you. But they manipulate you into your head to where you feel like you are obligated so you can keep this person, so you can keep this person happy. And then they're manipulative and they turn it around on you. That, oh, I'm not the problem. You're the problem. I didn't say that. You made me say that. I didn't get angry. I didn't yell at you. I didn't call you all those names. You made me do that. Um, and so it's it's very manipulative. You are so right. I never got to meet his family, friends, ex-baby moms. Yep. And it's crazy. It's crazy because it sucks. And that's, and, and I the, also the thing to remind yourself is do not let yourself feel stupid. Do not, do con not say, Words like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. Why did I do this? Why did I get in this? I missed all the red flags. Why am I so stupid? Why am I dumb? Don't say that because you were blindsided. They really, they really made you feel good at first. They, they drew you in and got you into this hold that was really, that really, really, really felt really good. And then now they're now that they have you, that they feel like they have you for good, for a while at least, they can just be them now, their own self. So at the beginning, it's kind of like they were just faking it until now. Oh, I got them. They'll stay. They'll put up with my shit. Um, so, yeah, and it's hard because you don't see those relationships they had before. You don't see how they really are with other people. Um, maybe they don't really have anyone in their life, and that may be a big sign too, is that they don't have friends or a lot of family or a lot of people to come to because they are so manipulative and maybe those people see it but they've they've kind of blindsided you for this time um yes yeah, 16 years that's a long time girl and yeah it's a long time 
and just know that no matter how long and it, and that's I that's why I feel like so many women live unfulfilled lives because they're they feel like it's oh it's been so long it's been so long might as well not leave now and I want you guys to know that like even if it's been so long even if it's been 50 years 60 years maybe you're older up there in age and it's been so, super super long that one day that you finally free yourself that one day that you feel so confident in yourself and you finally heal yourself and you you are finally there you're going to be so happy that you left like nothing else matters now you're free now you're able to live your life now you're able to move on and do you when if you would have stayed because of that fear you're going to live your entire life in that fear in that in that what if in that Oh, having someone be so manipulative and so narcissistic to you, so toxic to you, making your entire life a living hell. And so the minute you leave is the minute you free yourself, is the minute you improve your life, is the minute you start your healing process, your healing journey. He has burned out every bridge in his life and mine. Yep, and that's that's another sign. Like, they, they burn bridges and they literally don't care and they're just looking for that next supply or looking for looking for something more and it sucks because people want to love each other like you went into this relationship because you wanted to fall in love with them because you wanted to be happy and then it turned out it didn't and it doesn't mean you're stupid it doesn't mean that you're you're not good enough it doesn't mean that you're dumb for getting into this and being so naive it doesn't mean any anything negative about you it just means that you were literally wanting to love someone and be in, and to be in a happy relationship and their narcissistic traits their toxicity was they were able to blindside you because they're very manipulative they're very sneaky um another sign that you're dealing with a toxic um, narcissistic person is that they make you feel bad about yourself like every argument many arguments maybe not every but many arguments you have many fights you have many many downsides you have when it's not even about you it may be that you're driving together and they're they're screaming at you and maybe you turned the wrong way and that had nothing to do with your brilliance that had nothing to do with you being good enough that had nothing to do with your weight and then they automatically freaking start at you they're yelling at you they're calling you bad names they're they're saying you're fat they're saying all this stuff um maybe it's that you you said something that triggered them and then it wasn't even anything to do with you it was just something that made them upset and triggered them and they come at you with all the personal names all the personal like lashes and it had nothing to do with you but they feel bad so they want to make you feel bad and they're going to do it on a personal level because they do not care so they will make you feel bad about yourself and they don't care how bad you feel anyone who gets close to me family friends cokers yep yep very common and and i think that's like it's good that you're you're you know you know what you're doing we kind of talk about everything but um i think it's good because the minute that you break away you free yourself the minute that you break away and you you take that first step into the unknown it can seem freaking scary and it can seem unsure and you can you can question yourself and you can second guess yourself and you can you can make plans to do it over and over and over and then never do it but the minute that you do it is going to be the minute that you free yourself the minute that you start to heal yourself the second that your life is going to change and it's scary and that's normal because our brains are wired to like comfortability. Our brains are wired to like to know what's going to happen. So when you step into that uncomfort zone, your brain's freaking out. Like, what the heck is going on? What is what's going to happen to me? And that's why people go back time and time and time again because that unfamiliarity, that uncomfort zone. So please know, like on the other side of this toxic relationship, there's so much happiness and confidence and, and clear choices and a better, happier life to where you can live again. If this is a toxic relationship you're in or if you're suffering after being in one, there is there is a whole nother side to this, whole nother side of happiness and life. Another sign is that they have difficulty managing their anger. And again, that's why I shared earlier today, like the whole key phrase to shut them down and disarm them is that you're not responsible for their anger. 
and no matter how angry they get i think i think what sucks sometimes is that when we're in this we're in the midst of this toxic relationship we want to make them happy because we believe that making them happy will make everything else better that if they're just happy and you just do enough to make them happy your whole life will just fix itself and most likely that's not going to be the case ever and that's why it's so important to leave these situations and these relationships when you've tried and tried and tried and tried so many times so they have difficulty managing the anger they lash out they get angry they they punch walls they they do whatever they get they get in their angry moments whatever they may do when they're angry because they have they can't manage it they can't control it and that's when they will say you made me angry you made me say those things about you you made me do that if you weren't so stupid if you could just shut your mouth if you could just do all of this stuff i wouldn't have done that and then it's your fault so when you say i'm not responsible for your anger i'm not responsible for your emotions those are your emotions and also reminding yourself that this anger that they feel has nothing to do with you it's a projection of how they feel inside about themselves so they will project onto you to make you feel bad because that whole saying hurt people hurt people so they have difficulty managing this another sign of a narcissistic or toxic person is that um they're controlling they don't want you to have friends they don't want you to have any life outside of them because that may mean that you may leave and leave them lonely and they don't want you to Maybe they don't want you to take care of yourself. They don't want you to go get your nails done. They don't want you to get your hair done. They don't want you to look good. They don't want you to wear makeup. They don't want you to go and hang out with your friends. They don't want you to go and do these things. They want to control you. They want to have the ropes on you. And they want to decide what you can and can't do. And it all comes down to them wanting you for them all to them. Because then if you're all to them and you have no outside family to talk to give you the signs to talk and put it out there for you to notice if you are bettering yourself you may better your mind enough to leave and they don't want that i'm gonna read the comments for a second yes that would happen to me when i was driving he would question and criticize the roads i was taking i was once i once drove on the wrong side of the road coming off a roundabout and was head on with the lorry oh man and i'm sorry to hear that yeah but so it's so common like and it's the little things like this that driving someone yelling at you when you're driving is toxic in in the first place like shut up you know but then when they're going and they're being so manipulative and angry and negative and toxic over something that really is very very small it can get into your head and start to make you second guess like am i just like playing that off as something small Am I stupid and should I just drive on the right roads, you know? And then and eventually you find yourself doing things later on because that was the way they wanted you to do things. Even after maybe you've left because it's it became a habit to you. that You do these things because everyone's happy if you do these things. So I'm sorry that happened to you and that's scary. So those are some signs. I just wanted to throw those signs out there because I feel like I focus on helping women that are ready and that are have left that maybe are still suffering and want to get onto that side of that that happiness and the living life again but I also realize like sometimes when you're in that toxic relationship you aren't really aware of what's going on and it can be really hard to see the signs if you're in it so I think I wanted to come with you come to you guys and do this live video and share those signs so you can start to maybe see the red flags if you're in a toxic relationship so you can see that you're not stupid that you're not not good enough that you're not dumb that you're not this stupid idiot that they portray you as you're not and another sign that also comes up that i just want to add to is that they will be so rude to you they may be so rude to you put you down make you feel shitty yell at you but the minute someone else is around they'll act like they're perfect and this is also so those people don't come to you and say hey like they were they're bad they're pretty bad to you like they don't treat you very good like i didn't like how they were speaking and then if the, if someone came to you and said that you would start to question things you would start to ask yourself those questions well do they treat me good like 
is that is that wrong and so when they are good around these people they don't ever get you to question anything because those people think they're good to you this is why a lot of times when a person leaves a narcissist or toxic person their family doesn't get why and maybe doesn't even believe doesn't even believe them that the things went on that they said went on and so because they're it's it's manipulative it's it's crazy um and so that is all I want you to really take into your life today if you are in a toxic relationship is to just ask yourself the questions do I like how they're treating me do I like the way they make me feel am I even laughing with them anymore am I even smiling with them anymore or is it just a non-stop anxious eggshell walking life I'm living and if this is you reach out to me if this is if you feel like you're dealing with the things after the toxic relationship reach out to me I would love to chat with you if this is you let's connect um, I have in my cover photo on my Facebook profile I have a link I shared in the caption of the cover photo where you can go in and you can book a call with me and we can chat and we can have like a discovery call to really open have you open up about your situation about how you're feeling so you can have someone else to talk to but also I will get you to believing that you are good enough because that's all it takes. You are good enough regardless if you believe it or not. And a big part of leaving is recognizing your worth. So if I can help anyone do that, I'm happy to do that. So definitely go to the cover photo, click the link, book a call with me. It's totally free. No obligation, nothing. Um, so I love you guys. I'm going to jump off here. If you like this video, if you feel like there is someone in your life or someone else that may get a benefit from watching this video, please share it for them too. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.